Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Here I am with my partner, John Coleman, uh, co-founder, and uh, we have a very <laughs> special guest today. Uh, tell us about our guest, John. Uh, we do, Art, and I think it's an important uh, subject, an important guest, quite frankly. Guy really knows what he's talking about. And the subject is money. Money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. We all need money. Um, and of course, as you get older, somehow it's harder to get, isn't it? And harder to save and harder to uh, pay for things. So, And also, um, might I, I say, John, people... John, John, now that yeah. we and our audience are living longer, healthier lives, it's important not only to have a good amount of money, but to make sure that it outlives us or it finally, the last day of the last moment of our life, okay, the last dime is spent. So Yeah, you bet, you bet. Yeah. And, and, and money is uh, a, kind of an in, eternal problem, I think. No matter how old you are, you, you're always concerned about money. Um, but as you know, and I know, as you get over 50, uh, every decade you live over 50, you've got new issues and uh, dealing with money and investments and retirement and boy, everything that falls under that category is more and more important. So we have invited uh, an expert in the subject, a certified financial planner. His name is Dave um, Samuels. He is the CIO of Corinthian Wealth Management. We're based in San Jose, California, but certainly uh, a man who knows about financial planning for uh, everybody. So let's bring Dave on uh, because I've got a million questions for him, as I know you do, Art. There he Hi, is, Dave. Dave. How are you? Hey, doing good. How are you folks? Great. Thanks for joining us. Okay. The, um, the word financial planner uh, is certified financial planner is a is a not just a title, it's a qualification. Am I correct? You you, there is certification. In other words, yeah, it's a, it's actually we refer to it as a designation. And okay. what we do is is we take a number of classes and there is a full one day test, and after you've you know passed the test, then you're granted the designation. Gotcha. Gotcha. You, so you do have to qualify for it. Oh, and, yes. And it's certainly different than uh, uh, even if uh, you've done some planning on your own in the past. And let's say you have a brokerage account someplace. Uh, they may offer you all sorts of uh, advice uh, initially to set up your account. But uh, you differ from uh, a, a standard brokerage account uh, in that you, you give advice that's geared more for uh, somebody in their long term uh, and you're not as, as worried about making a fee off of them or making a couple of bucks off of them. Is that correct? Yeah. So Art, what you're referring to um, is that we, as a certified financial planner, the focus is more on holistic planning uh, rather than a brokerage account, which sometimes can be transactional. You're buying one product and selling another. Um, as a certified financial planner, we're going to focus mainly on what we term five pillars. And those five pillars, we look at taxes, we talk about estate planning, we talk about cash flow and retirement, we may talk about insurance, which is risk management, and then talk about investments. Right, and you guys, mm -hmm. you guys meaning certified financial planners, mm -hmm. and you in particular at Corinthian, are fiduciaries, am I correct? So you have, you have some kind of an oath, uh, forgive me for not knowing exactly how it works, but you have some kind of an oath you take that you you are serving your client. You're not there to make commissions by selling product. Yeah. So, John, you brought up a good point. As a certified financial planner, we are held under the fiduciary standard. So we must always act in our client's best interest. So if we're going to recommend something, that something needs to be best for the client. Yeah. On the flip side of that, occasionally clients are sold things that the broker recommended it because it paid it, say, a higher commission. Yes. We're agnostic. We're what's called flat fee or fee only. Yeah. What that means is no matter what we recommend is our fee is flat and it doesn't change regardless of what that product is. So it, 
really encourages us to focus more on the process of broad-based financial planning versus a product. Sure, sure. Just and quick, I, as, you, I, as, I, as a quick understanding on the on your flat fee, is that based upon let's say the uh, size of the uh, 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 estate that you're managing, uh, uh, size of the, or is it uh, based on uh, profits or 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 things like that? How, what is it, or is it just a flat fee? It's like X number of dollars per year. Well, John, that's going to depend upon um, what the client wants. Often, as you brought up, we'll base that on, as we say, assets under management, depending upon the level of assets. Sometimes we'll charge a flat fee as on a project. A client will say, we want you to do this. And then we negotiate and say, the fee to do that is this, and it's renewable every year. So it's, it's going to depend upon what's kind of best and what the client is looking for. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I, I like the fiduciary standard. Um, I think that's important, personally speaking, because I've, you know, having lived a few years, I've worked with lots of brokers and gotten lots of advice. And I can remember one particular investment that I threw a lot of money into at the time. It was a lot for me. And uh, it was basically a commission sale for the for the broker. You know, yeah. that was what it was. They were the, the brokerage was pushing a particular fund and everybody made money but me. Um, <laughs> so when when you go to a financial planner, I love the idea that it's an, uh, uh, this kind of broad overview, uh, mm -hmm. holistic view, I think you said, of financial planning. And at each age, you know, in the 50s, when you're 50, you might still have kids in college, who knows what, and you're 60, you're worried about completely different things. You're looking at, you know, retirement, slamming you in the face. Oh my God, where am I going to get the money to retire? Um, and when you're in your 70s, hey, you're you're managing it to to be able to survive, as Art says, <laughs> as long as you can outlive your money. So how do you deal with different clients? Or do you, you don't have one size fits all? I take it. No, um, and that's part of, once again, the process, John, of broad-based, holistic wealth management and financial planning. So someone in their 50s often will be at the peak of their working career, peak income, and starting to look at retirement. We'll start to advise them. They're going to ask, when should I take my Social Security? We have that conversation. What about required minimum distributions? As in when they hit age 72, it's mandatory they'll be drawing money out of their retirement account. We're gonna to wanna to discuss how is that taxed? How will that affect your overall lifestyle? How is that gonna possibly affect your estate planning? Do you have any needs at all for insurance? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But again, it's, it's broad based. And I mentioned the 50s, as you brought up, because that seems to be where that, the late 50s is where we seem to peak out in our earnings. Many of us think we can go on forever. And we certainly try. But as we all know, these birthdays creep up on us, so it doesn't always quite work out that way. <laughs> so you were mentioning that uh, uh, you, you have these general five pillars uh, uh, that you look at uh, when you're working with uh, your clients. Can you give us a brief uh, uh, ride through what those five pillars are? Sure. So the first one, there's no particular order, John. We always talk about taxes because we always want to avoid a tax surprise. So the last thing we want to do is advise you on something and you come back and say, hey, you didn't tell me it was going to cost me this much in taxes. We always try to discuss estate planning and every one of us has an estate. Think of everything you got as your estate. Now, for when you pass on, how do you want the estate distributed? Some people call this legacy planning and there's documents and things you can do to plan for estates. As simple as having your beneficiary designations. Who benefits if you die from your IRA? Maybe the house you own, maybe your brokerage accounts. Your cash flow and retirement planning, we always ask the question, are you creating wealth or are you creating debt? Hopefully you're saving and you're, you're ahead, but many people aren't. We try to help them with that. On the insurance side, we call that risk management. Um, I brought up a few times, well, for, I'll use life insurance. You may not need it at all, or you may have a need. You may have it at work. We want to review that. You don't come to us to buy life insurance, but you do come to get it reviewed 
and say, do I need it? Do I need more, less, or none at all? The fifth and final pillar is the investments. And that seems to dominate conversations only because the stock market is so dynamic. You know, every day it did this, it did that. What should I do with my money? That's a common phone call we get. No one calls us about taxes unless they see until they see their tax bill. Then they get nothing but grief. <laughs> or I, I'll give you a bad joke and then I'll let you take it back. Kenny Youngman always said, invest all of your money in taxes because they're sure to go up. <laughs> Boy, isn't that the truth? That, oh, man. You know, it's interesting because um, until I got to, I don't know, maybe 60 years old or something, um, taxes were always a, you know, a problem. Nobody likes to pay them, and you're always looking to get as much many deductions as you can. But I never realized, because the conventional wisdom 30 years ago was, oh, don't worry, once you retire, your income will be lower and your taxes will be insignificant because you'll be in a lower tax bracket. I got to tell you, having been retired, semi-retired, whatever you call it, for a number of years, taxes are really important. They'll kill you. Every, every dollar I pay in taxes, mean, somehow it means more to me than it did... 30 years ago. And as we keep hearing, it's not so much what you earn, it's what you keep. Yeah. So we're always trying to advise, once again, if you do this, how will it affect your taxes? And we go through each pillar, the estate planning, the cash flow, possible insurance, investments. Once again, we want to walk you through because you want to avoid surprises. And it might be something just as simple as, I'm going to take some money out of my IRA. Okay, you can do that. How will it affect your taxes? Well, that's tax at your highest ordinary income rate. Why are you taking it out of there? Is there another place to get it from? Or maybe you had a bad year in income, and we might recommend take some money out of your IRA. You have such a lousy year, you're not going to feel the extra taxes. You're still in the similar, same or similar bracket. Okay, so would, yeah. would, I, would I be right in saying that uh, as a holistic approach, and I'm not advocating this at all, uh, and normally it gives me the uh, the shivers when I see all of these uh, uh, seemingly uh, trusted individuals talking about reverse mortgages, and they're getting better mm -hmm. at it. Uh, but uh, there may in fact be uh, a reason that maybe you're in your 80s and uh, you don't want to take money out of a IRA because you have tax penalties, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, that things like that might be worthwhile and you would be able to have a pretty good sense of does it really make sense for you? What's going to happen it, with, with you, uh, or, you know, when the, the, the time to uh, uh, hand it over to somebody uh, happens? Is that the kind of thing that you would get involved in as a, uh, uh, as a certified uh, a planner? So our, here's where a fiduciary enters into the picture. We, as certified financial planners at Corinthian Wealth Management, we do not sell reverse mortgages. However, we will advise. We'll say, if you do a reverse mortgage, here's the pros, here's the cons. We have no vested interest, whether you take the reverse mortgage or don't take the reverse mortgage. We just want to let you know it, has a, it could have a purpose, and it may make sense. But once again, on our end, we're able to take a big step back, kind of like your accountant or maybe your attorney when they're advising you, so once again, whether you follow our advice or not, again, we have no vested financial interest. And so it keeps us out of selling a product. We stay within our process of financial planning. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And, yeah. and all five of these pillars um, really affect each other, don't they? They do. They all, all coordinate together, John. So we, that once again, we, try, we don't want to really advise or do anything until we know how each pillar is effective. Might be something as simple as saving up a down payment for a home, or some people want to accelerate certain taxable income because they're worried about a certain issue coming up. It could be saving for college, all sorts of things. But everything affects everything else. We don't want to do one thing out, totally outside and create a surprise later. Um, why do you suppose more people don't use uh, a, fin a certified financial planner, because uh, I know a lot of folks who, who don't. Hmm. It's, you know, John, it's hard to say. It's very attractive for some people to be a do-it-yourselfer. Um, they'll, for example, say, I need no insurance. 
okay? Or I do my own taxes. Or I just do a um, power of attorney and maybe a um, transfer on death versus perhaps some other deeper um, legal documents. And these things can get you by, as you say, in your 50s and in your 60s. But now all of a sudden, you start hitting ages where you have perhaps severe health and medical problems. Now you're going to say, gee, where's that durable power of attorney for health care? Or why didn't someone tell him that I could maybe deduct this on medical expenses? Or why didn't someone tell me the new tax law allows me to do this but forbids that as, for example, an inherited IRA? When you pass away, those laws have changed in how you take money and you pass it down to your children. There's laws that really restrict on how you can take it out in a tax-efficient way. So generally, people coast along until there's a change that directly affects them. Yeah. Mm. And I, I think a lot of people underestimate um, the, the complexity of, and, and, and having said those five pillars, laid that out, you know, mm. I, I don't think I've heard that before. Um, that, to me, makes it obvious how complex this all is, the financial world, yeah. uh, personal finances are, um, because all those things affect each other. And John, you, know, you speak of complexity. I mean, I, we're always consulting outside experts. It's not uncommon for someone to ask us a sophisticated insurance question or a tax question or whatever. We have on deck, I mean, numerous attorneys we consult with, and they use us as consultants as well. So let's just as professionals say, you know, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to get back to you with some information. And, and that, it's, it's better for everyone. So then it, people start to appreciate using someone like us um, yeah. as a broad-based you know, planner. Yeah. I, I have a, a one last question for you. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong, that most uh, people who come to you are well into their 50s or 60s, uh, but probably uh, uh, might have been better served by getting to you as they're really beginning to go up the curve in their, let's say, their late 40s, sure. uh, or early 40s. What would you recommend as, uh, obviously you're a partisan because uh, it's your business, but what would you recommend uh, people think about and how soon to get in touch with, what, what would be the tipping point for people to get in touch with a uh, certified financial planner? Yeah, I don't think it's so much age-based art as it's more of, I'm gonna call it need-based, because what a lot of people are doing now, which I appreciate, and younger ones, they're working hard. They're trying to save. They're participating in their company, perhaps retirement plan or 401k plan. But the big question they have is, am I on track to retire? They realize this is not gonna last forever. And a lot of times when people are unhappy with their work, they'll be coming to us because they're thinking, how quick can I get out of this? If I take three months off, how will that affect my retirement? Or I wanna retire at age, say, 60 rather than 65. That's where people are getting more triggered now. So the it's the clients are actually getting a little younger, which I think is a very healthy sign. We never want to say it's too late. I mean, to say, hey, you you should have done this and you blew it. And that, that's not going to make anyone feel too good. We always want to do something. There's some way to help people. But again, as you point out, starting younger is healthier because once again, and especially if they have, I'm going to call it special situation or special needs. An example, if they or maybe a family member has a significant health problem, that's called special needs planning. We want to plan for that as early as possible. Sure. Maybe, gee, that's not me. Doesn't doesn't affect me. Not at this age now, but some anything time something could happen. And I'm not saying we can be ready for anything. We want to say here are your choices. Here are your options, because you have a, you have a new situation now. You got hit with this that we didn't see coming. What are we going to do about it? And that's where planning really comes in. And I think people see value in it. Yeah. Also, I, I can't imagine that anybody wouldn't want good advice. As you said earlier, you know, whether they follow your, your advice or not, you're there to give them advice that as a professional, you think is best for them and their situation, you know, based on age and financial um, resources, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and the advice, I mean, after a while, it's sometimes, I hate to use the word, sometimes we have to, quote, prove ourselves. Um, a typical example is the stock market. You know, people worry about what's going on politically, what's going on economically, 
and it's there's a lot of drama. Turn on the TV, there's drama. Talk to your neighbor, there's more drama. So our our job is to keep people out of the drama thing. I mean, use it as entertainment. It's fun. Kick back and have a good good chuckle at it. But to use it as a basis to manage your personal wealth usually doesn't work out. And see, we're, that's why we get to be unemotional and detached. Sure, this is your money. This is your lifeline. We get to take a step, big step back because we're in it too. So then it allows us to say, you know, if I were you, or you're doing this right now, you here's a possible alternative, and here's why. That's when people start really sitting back and say, oh, okay, makes some sense. I'll, yeah. And I'll kind of leave it at this. We always are getting the mini panic attacks. Oh, my God, the market's going to crash because of this. Maybe we should get out. And it's our job to talk them off the ledge. And I, my explanation is, I've been doing this since 1987. The market's always going to crash, and it has. <laughs> and it always comes back. You know, I've got one last thought uh, that I wanted to get in before we go, and that is the word wealth. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people, I, I would say the great majority of people, do not consider themselves wealthy. And, of course, there are, we know that in America the saving rate is pretty crappy. Uh, most people don't save a lot of money. Most people don't have enough, quote, to retire, whatever that means. Um, and the word wealth, I think, scares some people. They say, oh, I'm not wealthy. I don't I." What I don't have enough to make it worthwhile to go to a financial planner. Yeah. And the word wealth to a lot of people signifies millions. And the average person will say, I don't have millions. No financial planner is going to want me. I'm doomed. And the flip side of that is you're the folks we want to talk to. Often you're the ones that are the best listeners and ones we can really get creative with and have a good conversation and help out. Oh, we all like the big clients, you know, the wealthy ones. But frankly, that, that's the low-hanging fruit there can be easier to deal with. Someone with $5 million to deal with, nice. You've done a good job. Someone with $500,000, we have to have a good conversation because we have some serious planning we have to do to move forward. Yeah. Okay, so I have, and, one, and I have, one, I have one last uh, question, and, and then maybe John has one as well. Um, uh, if people want to find out more about certified financial planners, I know that uh, you have information online uh, that will be a po point them in the right direction. And quite frankly, if uh, they wanted to have a follow-up conversation with you, uh, you basically can work with anybody uh, in, yeah. in the U.S. or uh, I don't know what your, your area would be, but uh, where can they go to find out more information about what you do and, in, in effect, certified financial planners in general? Well, our website is www corinthianwealth.com and the certified financial planner they have a board i believe it's cfp.org as a certified financial planner.org org um I'm, i haven't been on that site for a bit but that that's their site it's a very good site it gives broad-based information and we actually have information here that we can forward to or direct clients to as well if those who are interested in exploring what is a certified financial planner so you can get a good grasp on expectations. Uh, Dave, you. is the best way to contact you uh, through the website or a telephone yeah. or uh, an email? Either one. Uh, I'll give out my direct landline. Is okay? Sure. I'll just tell you it's 408-995-0817. Either way. Great. And, then, and you, of course, you've got a, a firm. You guys have been in yeah. business for a while. So you've got a firm of people that um, it's partners, not yes. just you. No, no. no as, yeah. you, as you're pointing out, John, I'm not a one-man show. I have partners and we have operations right here yeah. in the office. Yeah. Well, this has, been, uh, this has been extremely useful because I think not enough people um, either know about what a finan certified financial planner does or have even thought about visiting one, much less use your services. So I think that's really good. Um, I'm sure you'll get some phone calls from people and um, you'll be able to help them. And I'm sure that other people will be looking for um, now uh, fiduciary advice. Like Right. That's my like big you, takeaway is that you, your relationship yeah. is as a fiduciary, not as a sales rep of, uh, yep. of product, which is yeah. uh, really an important difference. Yeah. 
and as, as we're wrapping up here, we have no minimums. So, I mean, do we, we're not, once again, we mentioned the word millions. No, that's not required here. We have no minimums. And we do have the free consultation. Oh, and we oh, urge you okay. because you asked a lot of great questions. And I know this goes by very fast for people that are not familiar with this. So we like to take our times on that initial interview, once again, at no cost. So then whoever we're talking to, if they decide to come on board, we want them to feel comfortable. Yeah, sure. Our clients, I've been doing this a long time. We've had clients that have been with us for decades. So, and we have, you know, it's legacy planning. We're helping now their children and even some of their grandchildren. Sure. Well, I think the most important thing, quite frankly, is the fact that uh, working with a certified financial planner, you are getting customized advice for you and your situation, as opposed to, I don't know, all the millions of financial uh, gurus are out there on television, newsletters, things like that. You know, that's a one size fits all kind of thing that, yeah. I don't know, might work for some people, but not necessarily. I think it's dangerous stuff. So uh, the cus I love the customized idea and the fiduciary idea behind it. Um, yeah. You know what we need to do, Dave? Uh, you mentioned those five pillars. We really should do some more videos with you and explore each of those five pillars individually, because there's, there's a lot of detail in that. You know, I'm thinking just taxes alone, but certainly, um, you know, the savings, um, things like that. You know, there's a, boy, there's so much to talk about. Okay. Can you join us again sometime in the future? Would love to. Yeah, really, really enjoy doing this, of course. Right. Well, thank you so much for this, uh, Dave. And we, thank you. Uh, I, I look forward to the uh, additional information We'll get in those videos, but this has been a, a, a eye opener for me, and uh, appreciate it. Uh, I suspect for uh, many in our audience as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.